you is cancer and infectious agent. Okay, here. So when you're talking about cancer and infectious agents, so they are agents which can cause cancer. Okay. So if you look at this, causes of some cancer are infectious agent. Okay, the proposal that cancer are caused by infectious agent has had a very up and down history. Okay, and today we can be certain that many cancers are pathological with infection agent as necessary factors. So now, uh, not just now, since 90s, WHO have defined, okay, agents as the definitive, definitive factor for causing a cancer. Okay, that is that has been already being uh, classified since uh, uh, mid of 80s and 90s itself. Okay, so if you look at now, so worldwide estimated 17.8% of neoplasm are associated with infection. This percentage ranges from less than 10% in high income countries and 25% in African countries. But if you look at the International Agency for Research on Cancer, this was in way back about a decade ago, but why I still want to put, even long ago they have decided, you see, infection causes one in six of all cancers worldwide. So this is just to highlight you, if you have six person having cancer, so one of the person might be due to caused by infection. So that is quite high, okay? So these are the global burden that if you look into infection of cancer, this is in Lancet. So if you just can have a look, I'm just putting this to show you, okay? And then if you look at here, so what kind of things that are contributing to cancer? So 90 to 95% are contributed by environment. And only about 5 to 10% are contributed by genetic mutations. Okay? But if you look, the environment would contribute back to genes itself. Okay? But what are the main factors here is the environment. If you look at environment, they have diet, tobacco, obesity, alcohol, and things, but 15 to 20% is by infection. So what we are going to focus, we are going to focus in this. So 15 to 20% of the 90 to 95% of factors that would cause cancer is infection. Okay. So if you look into the mechanism, per se, Okay, I have put here the carcinogenesis, DNA repair, and so on. This is for, for you to understand. So you all have learned about the uh, pathogenesis of cancer. But if you look at here, okay, they, we, we say may contribute to the development of human tumor by different mechanism. So they have two types of mechanism is by indirect mechanism, which is indirectly by inducing immunosuppression. So it induces an immunosuppression on the host cell by modifying the host cell genome without system of the viral DNA. Okay. The second one is directly it's inducing oncoproteins or by altering the expression of the host cell protein at the site of viral integration. So they would do it directly by inducing their oncoprotein in or by suppressing the immunosuppression and they modify the whole cell genome. Okay, so this is how this infection is being carried out and how they take charge. And then now the cells is being a cancerous cell. So if you look at infection and cancer, so I've, I've just put out some lists here. Okay, so if you look at here, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, which is caught by, sorry, which is caused by hepatitis B and C, genital cancer, okay, it's usually cervical cancer and so on, HPV 16, 18, and 6. Gastric cancer, it's not virus, it's helicobacter pylori. Okay, adult T cell leukemia, it's the HDLV1 virus. Merkel cell carcinoma is Merkel cell polyvirus. And you see mucosa associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma. 
this is caused by parasites. Okay, helminths and cystosomas. And lymphoma, which is caused by HIV-1. Lymphoma also can be caused by EBV. And poisacoma by HPV-8. So, and most of the cancer here, if you, if you look, I have put here, cancer of the cervix and hepatocellular carcinoma counts for 80% of the virus link cancer. So they are the major okay, cancer of cervix and cancer of the liver, particular carcinoma, will cause very high level of cancer development, which is about 80%. Mm -hmm. So these are the lists. If you look at here, F10 bar virus, they could uh, cause Kate lymphoma, Hodgkin lymphoma, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, lysoperigeal carcinoma, and KT cell lymphomas. Okay? So if you look at Hep B virus, it can cause hepatosolar carcinoma, Hep C also, yes. And if you look at human papillomavirus type 16 and 18, and others, 16 and 18 is the main one which causes cervical cancer. Others would be for anal, oral, penile, <clears throat> oropharyngeal cancer, vaginal cancer, vulvar cancer, and so on. The HIV-1, variety of immunosuppression cancer related, anal, the certain part of cervical cancer, conjunctiva cancer, Hodgkin lymphoma, and so on. So this uh, is HCLV-1, just as I said. Okay, but now let's just look into infectious agents. You see, uh, Helictobacter pylori, which is not virus. Virus is the main one. If you look at here, virus is the main one. There are also few other types. This is just the example, but not exhaustive. So if you look at the Helictobacter pylori, it can cause gastric cancer. So liver flukes, which is parasite, okay, angiocarcinoma, cystosomes, it can cause bladder cancer. So cancers are not just caused by mutation as we learned earlier, but it is also caused by infection, which is altering the cell mechanism and cell genetic information. Okay. So this is another list. Later when you, I think you all have, you all have the slides already in the, uh, so you can, you, you, you can have a look, it's the same thing. So what are the different types of cancers and what is the, level of evidence that is there. Okay, certain level of evidence is low means there are not much, uh, a lot of information about there. Okay, so more research and more um, prevalent study has to be done on it. Okay, so let's look at this. Hold on. Okay. Main infectious agent involved in cancer. So uh, we will be focusing on the main ones here, okay? So looking at the worldwide, we can now point at the main infection cancer, which is the HPV and HBV, hepatitis, okay? Virus C, C and hepatitis virus B, and also helicobacter pylori, which is the most certainly contribute to gastric carcinoma. Okay, so you see, these four examples probably account to a fifth or more of cancer globally. So there is quite a lot. Okay, so there's quite a lot. So if you can see here how much that it's contribute, especially in the less developed region, because the sanitation and uh, what I say, the cleanliness is an issue. So they got transmitted very easily. Okay. So when you look at World Health Organization, they have estimated up to 80% cases of some cancer are attributed to viruses, as I said, for example, like uh, hepatocellular carcinoma and cervical cancer, about 80%. Okay. And that more than 1.5 million, which is 15% of new cases each year, could be avoided. So you see, this is the important. It can be avoided by preventing the infection disease associated with them. So now, this can type of cancer can be prevented. Okay? Because when you don't allow the infection to happen, you protect it, you protect yourself from the infection, and there's no cancer because it is associated with the infection. So IARC concluded that infection of human helicobacter pylori 
is casually associated with the risk of developing the adenocarcinoma of the stomach. Okay, so H. pylori is also associated with two less common form of cancer, which is non-Hodgkin lymphoma and mucosa associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma of the stomach. So H. pylori is a very well-known bacterium that causes gastritis. Okay, so people are trying to check, and doctors give you medications, okay, acids, and so on for you to uh, kill off the H. pylori because. When you think, okay, I'm having gastritis, I'm having gastric problem, but you're not taking care of yourself, this could lead to stomach cancer. So it is another very important thing that people have to look into it and causing. So if you look at here, I put a very old study. This is another landmark study published in June 1997. Shows that a 12-year nationwide vaccination program against hepatitis B. So we also, in Malaysia also, we are being vaccinated for hepatitis B, but Taiwan, during that time, they have done a very close monitoring and a study. Look into how can it significantly reduce the number of cases of childhood liver cancer. Okay? Adulthood liver cancer could be caused by uh, different things also, but childhood liver cancer, they were just specifically looking into that, but it's actually significantly reduce in the number of cancer, of liver cancer in patients, in kids who have been vaccinated when they have said they compare with the statistics, which is not, okay? Well, one, you all can just Google this, you can get the paper, okay? And besides that, if you look at the second one, the uh, infection origin of carcinoma of the cervix, which is cervical cancer, okay? It's been long been suspected previously. I'm talking about, I'm just putting previously, because known risk factor of the disease are linked to sexual activities. And recent evidence indicates that that human popular type 16 and 18 are definitive, 31 and that they are classified probably carcinogenic. Okay? But 16 and 18 are the definitive one, and they are now causing about 80 to 85% of cervical cancer. Sorry, 75 to 85% of cervical cancer. Previously, in, in early 2000, they were saying 90 to 95% by HPV 16 and 18, but now percentage have reduced because of a lot of surveillance and epidemiological data. Now they are proposing 70 to 75%. Okay, so mechanism of infections, which is induced by malignancy. Okay, so chronic inflammation and carcinogenesis which means that when you have chronic host pathogen interaction, you will get some kind of immunosuppression effect, which will cause the cell to be cancerous, okay? And besides that, chronic inf inflammation of a cell due to infection could cause oxidative stress, DNA damage, and could cause mutation, cell injury, and it also could induce cell division. So, an infection so inducing the cell proliferation. And how they, they do it, they increase the production of oncogenic protein. Oncogenic protein means protein that induces cancer, protein that contributes towards carcinogenesis. So, all of this kind of this infection induces this oncogenic protein in the host and slowly change the host cells to become cancerous cells. Besides that, genomic instability from viral genomic integration, which means that when there is an infection of virus, the viral genome would integrate with the host genome, and it causes the instability of the host genome. Not all viruses does that. Uh, EBV, Sandbar virus, and HPV does that. So, uh, until here, do you all have any questions or anything for you all to ask before I start to explain the viruses and how they have this mechanism? Anyone? In chat or something? Oh, more of a, everyone can understand. 
More or less. More or less. The rest of it, you are here or sleeping? Don't. I didn't hear from anyone else. Alim, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, okay. So, I might be starting to ask some questions randomly. Okay, to everyone. Let's continue. So, if you look, what is virus and, and what type of viruses are there? So, virus is always infectious and it has been considered as a very, very big debate is it living or non living? Okay, but now it's still classified under non living. Composed of cas shape, genome, and sometimes they have envelope and they are obligate intercellular parasites. Okay. So they are obligate intercellular parasites. So there are examples of viruses, they are quite a lot. Okay, you all can just Google and see HIV. I just put HIV, influenza, you know, virus, but there are a lot of viruses there. So, but now what we are going to focus, so what is, so what is an oncovirus? Okay, so what, what we are focusing here is a virus which has been termed or called as oncovirus. Okay, so some of the known oncoviruses here are, as I have mentioned earlier, I'm repeating again and again. FC, Hep B, HLB1, HPV, HHV, Microcell, and EBV. There are a few others also. This is just an example. So, if you look here, so human papilloma virus can cause genital tumors, plumber cell, oropharyngeal, Epstein Barr virus, nasopharyngeal, African bucket, B cell. FB, epidermal carcinoma, okay, human T lymphotic viruses, okay, so it is uh, adult T cell leukemia is associated tumor due to impact T cell responses, okay, because of the infection, the T cell responses drop and it also could create, uh, develop some kind of tumors. So Hep C virus is also epidermal carcinoma. But you see Hep B and Hep C falls into a different family. Okay, it is not the same family, it's different different family of the virus. So uh, just now we look at the virus. So now we want to see what are the oncoprotein which can cause cancer. Okay, so if you look at human papilloma virus. So you have the viral oncoprotein E6 and E7, which does all the work of converting, okay, and they, they do tumor suppressors and so on. So they target P53, DLG1, MAG1, MAP1, and PRB. Okay, so you can have a look like you see like Epstein Barr virus, the viral oncoprotein is LMP1, VIL10, PCL2 homolog. It's similar like homolog, sorry, similar like BCL2. So where does it do? It infects trough L10 receptor, soluble cytokines, and rescues cell from apoptosis. So the cell need to go apoptosis or it to die so that it won't produce cancer cell. But this virus, virus does what? It rescues the cell from apoptosis. Okay. So it blocks the apoptosis and rescues the cell so that the cell could maintain and be cancerous cells. Okay, this is the proteins that is being produced by the viruses. So all these proteins are not host protein. They are protein from the virus which is inside the host. Okay. So when you look at general features of viral carcinogenesis, mostly there are DNA viruses. So, exception for some retroviruses and flaviviruses, so they are RNA virus, and they influence the cell cycle because they want to make sure the cell is keep on cell is keep on proliferating. So that is why all these viruses they influence the cell cycle, including protein that direct cell cycle progression. It makes sure the cell 
it's continuously going on cell cycle. They does not stop for interface and let the cell mature. And so integrating near cellular genes that control cell cycle progression. Again, you see. Okay. So I put here in the see the central tenants of viral carcinogenesis. What does it mean is that viruses can cause cancer in humans and animals? Okay, tumor viruses frequently establish persistent infection. They make sure that they embed into the cell properly and the infection is persistent and keep on continuing going on. And all subcategory factors are important determinants for this type of cancers. Okay, and viruses are seldom carcinogenic on their own, which means that when they go and infect, they cannot become carcinogenic on their own. So that's why how they do it is that they cannot replicate without the capsid. Now they have to be in the cell to infect the cell. So what they did, they go and embed themselves into the host genome. Now the host genome would be producing this oncoprotein. Okay. So virus infection are far more common than viral cancer. Okay, there are a lot of viral infection, COVID, influenza, bird flu, and so on. But viral cancers are very low comparatively with viral infection. Okay, the prolonged period years are usually required for viral carcinogenesis, as I said just now. Viral cancers are low, but same thing. Even though they are low, in comparison with viral infection for flu and things, they are quite a lot. A billion compared to millions. So, but. An infection of virus it doesn't immediately causes cancer. For example, like you want to get COVID, you get the viruses today. Within two three days, you fall sick. But for cancer, no. Once it integrates, it takes years, sometimes ten to twenty years, for it to be developed as a full fledged cancer. So viral strain may be different in their capacity cause cancer. Definitely different strains, different. Like when I say HPV is only type sixteen and eighteen. If you get type 24, then it's not going to cause cancer. So cancer viruses modulate cell cycle progression. As I said it, it wants to keep on producing daughter cells. Animal model can reveal mechanism of carcinogenesis. So if you use for your research animal model, it could reveal how the carcinogenesis happened. Okay, so people are doing it quite a lot too now. Viral markers are usually present in cancerous cells, and then. One virus species can be associated with multiple tumor types. So it's not just one. Okay, so it can go to multiple tumor types. Okay, yeah, just to show you what I, what I meant on that. Okay, if you look at here. So, uh, sorry, HPV. Okay. So could HPV could be here and could be here. Okay, EBV is also for lymphoma, and EBV is also for NPC, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, and so on. So something like that. Okay. So interaction of tumor viruses with their host. So how now tumor virus interact with the host, and then make sure that the virus could survive. And then at the same time, they are also converting the host into a cancer cell. Okay. So all known human cancers establish persistent infection. So they establish a persistent infection. And then genetic differences in individual result in differential susceptibility. Okay. So it depends on individual's resistance also. Someone will get it fast, someone will get it late, it will take time. To look at persistent virus must evade the host immune response. Okay, you must understand them. Eh? Why I put here evade is there is all the cells, all the host, they have immune surveillance, what we call immune surveillance, like your CCTV, your access card, and so on. Okay, so with that, the Virus must make sure that it evades and it doesn't get being engulfed or eaten by macrophages and so on. Okay, so they they have managed to do that. 
So different viruses have evolved different evasion mechanisms. So like EVV have a different uh, mechanism to evade and HPV have a different mechanism. Okay. So all of it have different, different mechanism. So mechanism of action by the viruses. So how they action. Viral gene is able to subvert cell cycle control. One. Viral viruses alter the expression of normal cell cycle progression gene. Okay, so either re a results in cellular transformation into oncogenic state, even by subword or by altering the expression. So tumor viruses possesses which is cell specific and do not interact with other cells. TBV only infects B cell. HTLV only infects T cell. If you put HTLV, there is no T cells. It cannot infect. Okay, it cannot infect the B cell. If there's only B cells available, and it's vice versa. So retention of nucleic acid in a cell, what does it happen? Viral genes are always present in the transformed cell. So viral genes are always present there, and then cells are keep on producing the oncoprotein. Okay, so if you look at the epidemiological, Typical infection viruses are exogenous and they could be easily transmitted through sexual transmission, IV drug users, and we put here other un unknown transmission mechanisms. So until now, we are not sure. The scientists are not sure. So if it's germline, then it's endogenous. So endogenous means high degree of similarity to retrotransposons. Some are required for normal function. Okay. So, for example, recombinant activation of gene 1 and gene 2 that rearranges, sorry, that rearrange antibody and T cell receptor genes. So it can rearrange that. So when you look at classification here, so type, what are the type of retroviruses? The leukemia viruses and non-transforming retroviruses. So what are the mechanism of retroviruses? Sinogenesis. The infection lead to uncoating of the cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is not coated anymore. So reverse transcriptase makes a double stranded copy of RNA dependent DNA polymerase, a DNA dependent DNA polymerase, and a DNA dependent RNA polymerase, whichever that the viruses one. Okay. The double stranded DNA translocate into the nucleus where it randomly in integrates with the host. Cell chromosome. So now they have integrated the host cell chromosome. This version of the viral genome is terms as provirus. And they also have two replication strategy is to induce cell division or they do productive infection spread of the virus to other cells. It is a type of transcription factor. Okay, and dimerize with cellular activation factor 4. And why I put that, this one binds to the HTLV proviral and cellular motors to drive cell division. Okay, so it doesn't go directly sit at cellular promoters, but it sits in text, then text goes and induce that, induce the cell division. As an example now, let's look at hep C. Yeah. C core protein interferes with the P53 trimmer suppressor. So it doesn't, once it interferes, P53 is not functional and it cannot do too much suppression. Okay. So who can get infected? Anyone can get infected. Okay. Particularly IV drug users, transplant or transfusion before 1990. Right? Prior to 1990, there were no technologies very fast technology for you to determine what type of virus, whether you have infections or not. There's no next gen sequencing yet. So high risk sex, body piercing, tattoos, babies born to Hep C plus mother, actually mother, sorry, Hep C positive mothers. And if you look at one in 30 baby boomers, and 75% those living with it. So when, when you get it, 
So you have to live with that. It's very, there's very small chances that you get it totally being removed from your body. So that is FC. So they have already have treatment for that. So they can use riboberin or other antiviral plus riboberin. So it is liver or the last result would be liver transplantation. Okay. So liver resection or trans transplantation, adjuvant, chemo and XRT, all of these are option. So let's look at HEP-B, the differences between C and B here. So, and this virus, how it creates, it will bind to liver cancer and is taken inside. Viral DNA is reproduced in the cell nucleus, which helps to create new virus particle, which infects the surrounding cell also. Okay. So, when you look at HEP-B, it's an envelope. DNA virus, but this is quite alarming. 350 million people chronically infected worldwide. Prevalence of chronic infection in high prevalent areas can be as high as 10 to 15 percent. About 80 percent of liver cancer are caused by HPV. Okay, and chronically infected have a 40 percent lifetime risk of developing HCC. So once they are infected, now they have 40 percent to develop for the solar carcinoma. One of the major pathways which HBV infection increase risk of, <clears throat> sorry, for the liver are chronic inflammation, oncogenic protein, they, they, they term it as X protein, dynamic instability from viral DNA integration. If you look at the last bullet there, 8.1% of all cancers attributed to it. HBV, 4.9 to HBV and HCV. Okay. So anyone can get it. Usually, uh, usually also sexually transmitted, and it also can be transmitted via infected blood, wet or dry. So each subtype have different genome, and each genome is endemic to a different area. And the vaccine is already available very long ago, since 1982. And the, the, sorry, the specificity is very good. It's about 95% effective. Okay, and it's the first against major human cancer. So for this, this was the first vaccination. So if you, if you don't go vaccination, you want to treat the virus based on viral genotype, usually includes antiviral and interferons. So treatment for this cancer is liver resection or transplantation. Okay, is adjuvant, chemo, or XRT. So these are the example of an cancer in chronic liver. This liver is very chronic, up to 90% of HCC, and they also have coexisting of cariosis. So this liver is totally damaged. So now we need a new liver to make sure that we could survive. So human T, Lymphotropic virus, HTLV1. Okay, so causes which cancer is causes adult T cell leukemia and lymphoma, non organs Also causes HTLV associated myelopathy. Okay, and uh, demilating diseases. This is on neurology. And most patients die within a year of diagnosis. So this is very, very are uh, highly infectious. So once you got di di diagnosed about one year, you only about one, have one year, the patient dies if they cannot be treated. If how this thing happens, virus enter the T cell where it's, it's two strands of RNA are copied into double strand DNA. You see, they go in, they instruct the cell to produce the DNA, okay, ready to be sexually transmitted or Transmitted via spreading. So it has an RNA virus. It's very prevalent, uh, about 10 to 15 percent in, in Japan, Caribbean island, South America, Central Africa, and parts of Pacific island. So you don't see it in Asia much. Okay, they, you might have one or two cases. Transmitted by one breastfeeding, two blood transfusion, and three sexual intercourse. So these are the main. Issues that 
it can be a cost. Okay. So usually acquired in infancy, but what it, what it does is immortalize the CD4 positive T cells, which now become the cause of cancer. And as you knew, as I was telling earlier just now about tax protein, so possible mechanism of oncogenesis using the tax protein to activate the transcription factor, but it suppresses the transcriptional inhibitor. So when you access transcription factor, so it will transcribe and the cell will start to divide. It suppresses the cell cycle inhibitors. So there's, there's inhibitors to inhibit the cell cycle or keep on happening so that the cell will mature. But now, this virus is going to suppress the cell cycle inhibitors. So it doesn't allow the inhibitor to work. Okay. So human T lymphotropic virus, so the same thing. So what is, what is the treatment for the virus? We have prosultamine as a cytidine and TDF and uh, other treatment plans also is available. Even immunotherapy, splenotomy, which is surgery, bone marrow transplant and so on. So who can get it? Anyone, but this is rare in the US where the highest prevalence is in the Southeast. African Americans. Okay, so it's, well, it's endemic to southern Japan and the Caribbean, South America, and Africa. And it's usually transmitted via yeah, infected blood. Okay. Uh, so you're having us uh, from 9 a.m. Yeah. Can anyone hear me? From 10, actually. Yeah, so just now you're having class from what time? Sorry? Dr. Sasi's class from what time to what time? 10, 10 to 11. 10 to 11, whatever. So you immediately you all continued here. So do you yes. all need a five minutes break or I can continue? Um, I guess it's okay for me either way. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, then I just go on. Eh? So this part is quite uh, important because we will be looking into uh, human papilloma. Okay, we'll be looking into human papilloma virus and how human papilloma virus uh, could cause cancer and evade the cell mechanism. This is where that you will be looking into that. So why we choose? Because this is the one very, very, very high prevalence of it, 25 to 80 percent, and this is well studied. So human papilloma virus, as I keep on saying, it causes cervical cancer, oropharyngeal cancer, anal and genitalia. Anyone can get it. Okay, cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in in women from breast. And it takes about 15 to 20 years to develop after the infection. So if the infection could be prevented in 15, uh, before 15 to 20 years, now we can actually reduce the number of uh, cervical cancer patients. So the risk factor, persistent HPV leading to cancer, okay, include multiple sexual partner, tobacco use, and immune suppression. Okay. So if you look at here, cervical cancer burden worldwide, every minute now while we are talking for the lecture, every minute a woman is diagnosed with cervical cancer in worldwide. And every two minutes a woman dies of cervical cancer worldwide. And if you look, new cases per year is about 5,000, death per year is about 2,000, 170,000. Okay, so these are the numbers that you can get. Okay, so 80% in developing countries, second cause of death in women, and every one hour, the Middle East loses a woman for cervical cancer. So if you, if you look at here, put here 90% cancer because this statistics was taken 
in uh, from a paper in 2006. Okay, so but if you look at here, it's very major, which is about all this pink uh, caused by HPV. So if you look at men, it's quite very few related cases in men. It's about 33,800 compared to 5,000. Oh, 527,000, okay? So, how it is being done? How you get it transmitted? So, it can be, you can transmitted via sexual contact, skin-to-skin -skin contact, can be transmitted rarely during childbirth, but it is very, very rare. And many different subtypes, which is subtype 16 and 18 are responsible one. Okay, and 6 and 11 are associated with genital warts. Nearly all cervical cancer and all cases of genital wart are caused by HPV. Treatment, there is vaccine, which is the mainly used one is Garasil and Cervarix. Okay, artery or cardiotherapy for warts and cancer. Okay, sternum circumcision is encouraged because the man could be easily transmitting it to female. Okay, so that's the reason. You, you can ask me, sorry, you can ask me here when there's Garasil and Cervarix, why they are now worried because they already have, okay? So there's been study to show that Garasil and Cervarix works, okay? But in certain, certain countries only because both of it is very expensive and then you can only vaccinate Okay, girls whom are 9 to 14 years old. So you have to vaccinate them at that age so that uh, there would be an effect and reduction in the cervical cancer. Okay, but most of the country, nearly more than two thirds of the country or three fourths of the country is not practicing this because the vaccine is very much expensive. So and it is also a cancer which can be prevented when you take care and you know how to take care of it. Okay, so let's look at the HPV genome. This is an example of HPV 16 genome. They don't have much. They are very small. Okay, they are about, about, about 8,000 base pairs only. 8,000 base pairs is very particularly very small. Okay, and then they have L1, L2, which is the capsid protein. E1, you see, initiation of viral DNA replication. Okay, E2, transcriptional regulator protein, absolutely role in viral DNA replication. E4, late protein disrupt cytokeratin. And E5, membrane transforming protein interact with the growth factors. E6 and E7 is the one that is actually playing role to take over the cell cycle. And they are the one you see that they treat as oncoprotein. Binds to E6 AP to ubiquitinate E53. Activate telomerase and binds to vaccination, which is everything to reduce tumor suppression and increase cell proliferation. Same things to uh, E7, it binds to PRB, a retinoblastoma protein, which regulates cell cycle. So once this binding happens, it cannot shut down cell cycle. Cell cycle keep on continuously going on. Okay, so if you look at mechanism of carcinogenesis, HPV DNA integrate into the host, and if you see E2 or E1 get disrupted during the integration, and no longer regulates E6 and E7. If you look here, E2 is transcriptional regulatory protein. Okay, so what it will do, it will suppress the E6 and E7 because it's not needed. But the virus is so smart when they integrate, they integrate at E2 or E1. So that this protein could not control the expression of E6 and E7. So therefore, E6 and E7 expression increases. E6 interacts with P53 and promote degradation of P53. So there is no more tumor suppressor. And E7 interacts with PLB and releases E2F, which promotes cell cycle progression. There's no tumor suppressor, and it's already open up the gate and the cell cycle keep on continually going on.
And E6 also interacts with P21 and inhibits it so that it cannot inhibit cyclin dependent kinases. So the, you see that how it takes over, it makes the cell to become like a zombie and do whatever the viruses are instructing. Okay, so the factors we don't look at uh, E6 and E7. E6 blocks P53, P57 blocks P21, PRB. Okay, which all of this regulates the cell cycle and keeping it doesn't go into the G0, sorry, G0 to G1 phase. But when all of this is being blocked, cyclin cannot work, PRB is continuously working. So the cell cycle keep on rotating. Here you see the arrow is block. Okay, it's actually blocking, but now everything should be straight after the infection. So if you look at how HPV oncogene causes cancer, okay, it's quite important. The E6 will bind to PRB and inhibit function of PRB. So what PRB does? PRB binds to E2F. Okay. Which is a transcription factor that can activate oncogene and that contains sequence for cyclin E and CMIC protein. So cyclin E is needed to advance the cell to mitosis, and CMIC is needed for mitosis. If the production of these proteins is uninterrupted by PRB, then the cell continues to divide unregulated. So you see. So on, only PRB is the key to control these two, cyclin E and CMIC. So now PRB is not controlling because PRB is being bound to E7. And now when cyclin E and CMIC is not under control, it goes to divide unregulately. So besides that, when E7 binds to PRB, it also promotes degradation of PRB. Okay, so and when PRB is degraded, there's no more to bind, go and bind to E2F and to block cell cycle. But now it results in cell proliferation. E6 binds with P53, inactivated. So what is P53? It's a tumor suppressor. If you look at the P53, several roles regulate cell cycle. Regulate means it controls, induce apoptosis, which is for the cells to die and they are cancerous, promote DNA repair, so it repairs the DNA, it doesn't allow the damage to be there, and prevent tumor growth, so it also blocks tumor growth. So inhibition of P53, and when E6 goes and bind and inactivate it, so all of this function wouldn't happen and could cause unregulated cell proliferation and cancer. So with the integration of HPV genome into the host, the genome is connected with cancer. This could be due to the loss of E2 during integration, as I said. And what does E2 does? It encodes protein that regulate viral expression. E2 does not regulate the expression of E6 and E7, then the cell proliferate and cause cancer. Okay, because the e, because the integration of the virus genome into the host genome, it disrupts the E2. It may some sort of like it cuts the E2 into two and then goes and go and join the left and right of the host chromosome. So there are a lot of evidence suggesting that HPV progresses successfully because it does not induce immune system response. So the cell could not induce immune system response, so the macrophage cannot come and eat the cell. So how it is being done? How it is being done? Firstly, first, keratinocytes target cell for HPV to come and sit and infect, they're the first one, are less likely to incite a novelty response than other type of host. Why? Because they sit far up high in the hierarchy of the cells. So they are sitting at the most like an open um, area. So open area is usually being infected and so on, so it does not incite. So once it's infected, the cell will die automatically on its own. But the infection of HPV is a bit different. Okay, they don't die, but now it integrates into the genome. So secondly, 
how it go, can also happen, how it invades the immune system. HPV produces gene that suppress part of the immune system. The protein encoded by E5 downregulates MHC class 1 molecules. So when MHC class 1 molecules are downregulated, so MHC class 1 molecule has then fragments of invading element in order for a T cell to detect and elicit immune response. But it downregulates the MHC, so the MHC cannot do that. And then it cannot have an immune response because it can the cell cannot say that, oh, I'm having a problem, I got infected. This is the signal, please come and eat me up and kill me. So it cannot do that because the E5 downregulates the MHC class 1 molecule. Thirdly, the immune system has better detection in the lower layers of the epithelium. So once the infection starts from the upper layer, which is the keratinocyte. Sorry. Which is the keratinocyte, then it will go from the cell perspective, it will go down and down. So they get the infection. So immune system has a better detection in the lower la layer, but in those cells, HPV produces low level of detectable element, such as capsid protein. Okay. Why they say so? Because once they have integrated into the host genome, it doesn't have to produce capsid protein propagate virus. The propagation of virus happens at the site layer. They go down and down. It is just the cell divides, which already have the HPV genome inside there. That is why it couldn't be detected also in the lower epithelium. Fourth one, the HPV infection does not involve the bloodstream. So it is only the cells which means the mechanism for immune system to detect an infection are limited. Usually when there's an infection, it will be present in the blood and it can be detected easily. That is how the cell uh, fighting mechanism happens. But for HPV, it's different because it does not involve bloodstream. And lastly, HPV infection does not cause host cells to lice or die. Okay, as I said, the cell does not die or lice by itself which would typically induce a danger signal. So now, when the cell doesn't lie or die, it does not induce danger signal. So therefore, there's no macrophages, there's no natural killer cells, and so on. So this is how HPV invades the, immune, the cell immune system or the human immune system and continue to stay on in the cell and uh, uh, become a cancerous cell. Now let's look at sapoi sarcoma. It's rare. It's quite rare. Okay, primary and effusion lymphoma. It can infect anyone, causes disease mainly in immunosuppressed patient because it's quite easy. Asymptomatic in healthy people you, most of the time. The HIV AIDS patient, transplant patients, the elderly, chemo patients are more likely if they have this uh, infection of this virus, they will develop um, poi sarcoma. While this virus is typically associated with AIDS patient in the US, infection is widespread in sub-Saharan African, and there are more cases of poi sarcoma than not just with the AIDS patient itself. Okay, so it can be sexually transmitted, it infects lymphocytes, establish latency, inflammation or some other stimulus ignite the lytic cycle and this one also it inhibits p53 like the hpv cell lysis allow virus to escape and infect the surrounding cell this one uh, it produces the virus in the cell and when the cell lies it goes and infects other cells so prevention except sexual practice cancer treatment is surgery radiation and chemotherapy Antiviral drug, we have luvia, which targets the HHV8, but isn't effective once tumor formed. Okay, you see, once tumor formed, isn't effective. So you must make sure that the tumor is detected at very early stage and it could be treated. The sarcoma is AIDS related. Best cause of action is antiretroviral medication. So let's look at EVV. Causes the Skin lymphoma, Burkitt lymphoma, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, and in HIV patient, it is associated with 
TNS lymphoma and hairy leukoplia. So who can get it? Usually about 90 to 95 percent of people who are infected in the childhood. It's no symptom. Causes infections of mononucleosis in adolescent. Causes cancer in certain geographical location and in immunosuppressed patients. So it's an enveloped DNA virus. More than 90 percent of worldwide population. Transmitted by slavery exchange. It could be transmitted by slavery exchange. Because it's all about nasopharyngeal, oropharyngeal, and so on. In fact, both epithelial and B cell. So associated with Brookhead lymphoma, nasopharyngeal cancer, and PC, and lymphomas in immunocompromised patients. The mechanism of carcinogenesis is latent membrane protein, the LMP1, located in the host cell. Okay. What does it do? It inhibits the apoptosis in lymphocytes and in epithelial cell. It activates the expression of epidermal growth factor receptor and anti apoptotic factor A20. So when the A20 is there, the apoptosis won't happen. Okay, so there's anti apoptotic. So how it can be transmitted by transfer of saliva, genital secretion, same genus as is it, sorry, HHV8. In fact, B cells and epithelial cells and can establish latency very easily. Treatment vaccine is currently on clinical trial. Obocate lymphoma, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, bone marrow transplant, stem cell, surgery and radiation. For Orkin, if early stage chemo radiation, if late stage only chemo. For NPC is chemo radiation and surgery. Actually chemo radiation is working quite well. Surgery will be done when there is a necessary. So let's look at the next one, which is the muscle cell polyoma virus. So it could cause muscle cell sinoma, which is rare, but it's aggressive. Okay. And neuroendocrine skin cancer. Okay. Muscle cell help us help to make up the barrier between dermis and epidermis. In between the dermis and epidermis, so you can find the muscle cells. And can occur anywhere you have skin and most commonly face. So who can get it? Chronically immunocompromised HIV patients, chronic lymphatic leukemia patients, more common in Caucasian males, median age is about 65% all. UV radiation may increase risk of cancer formation. So when you have when you go through UV radiation, it can increase that. It's quite rare, around 1,500 new cases each year. So this is one of the thing that you have the Merkel cell glioma, Merkel cell cancer. Exact mechanism of cancer formation is not known yet, yet the virus was first described in 2008, okay? So a lot of studies and things that people are carrying out to define this. Treatment, no vaccine or no treatment. Okay, so muscle cell carcinoma surgery and adjuvant radiation is the option. Chemo can be relatively or to shrink a tumor if needed. If not, they will just do the surgery. What are the approach to control infection related to cancer? So what are the approach for you to control that? So attempt to reduce infection related to cancer. Okay, so how you want to reduce the infection? So it involves effort to prevent infection and to control ongoing disease process. Using knowledge of infectious disease processes in cancer causation will further help in guiding intervention. The benefit must go beyond individual cases to have impact on the population. So that is what they are trying to do, how to do it. So if you all go and look, even in Malaysia, we have a cervical screening program so that people would be aware. And when you go for the cervical screening program, the doctors, the nurses will explain to you what are the safe practices, how you do it, how you can reduce the infections and so on. So another one is the vaccine approach. There are two approach to vaccine vaccination. One aiming at prevention, which is prophylactic. Another aiming prevention of disease development, which is therapeutic. Prophylactic means before you get the infection, as I was telling you, for cervical cancer, you have to 
vaccinate the girls between 9 to 14 years old. So that would fall under prophylactic. So when they go through adulthood, even though they have infection, infection would be killed off by the cell mechanism and it would reduce the further development. Okay, but the second one is you already have had the, the cancer. You already have been diagnosed with the cancer at early stages. Then the vaccine it's been given to make sure that it will react and reduce the cancer development. Another one is antibacterial approach. You all know that uh, this is something that you give, like whenever you go, you take antibiotics. So that's how the antibacterial approach for H. pylori. And if you see, look, look at this one. It is over two decades since the discovery of H. pylori as the cause of gastric and ulcer cancer. Early H. pylori dedication known to lead to decreased risk of gastric cancer in patients with peptic ulcer disease. Okay? So if you could treat it earlier, when you know you diagnose with H. pylori for gastritis, just make sure that you take the medication and so that it won't be developed to gastric cancer. Okay, so effective treatment with antibiotics in combination with good hygiene decrease the gastric cancer. The antiviral approach. So uh, for the viruses, how can be given with antiviral? Only several antiviral drugs are in the use for treatment of chronic HPV, okay, Hep B virus worldwide. Antiviral therapies have been shown to delay progression of cariosis and lower the incidence of HCC, thus improving long-term survival. So they never say yeah, it can completely remove, but it can uh, significantly reduce. So now let's look at oncolytic virus. What is the term of oncolytic virus? Viruses that help reduce or cure cancer. Huh? So this is different. Viruses that cause cancer is different. So whenever there is a term oncolytic virus, onco means cancer, lytic means lice. So it's lysing the cancer. So when you can lyse the cancer, which means that the cell will die. So that's why it is, so it's used for what? It's for treatment purposes. Okay. And oncolytic virus therapy is known as virotherapy. That's a term of virotherapy. If you look at here, October 2015, Telemugin, I don't know how to pronounce this, Laprovec, Evac was approached by FDA as the first ever oncolytic virus therapy designed specifically to target melanoma. So it has been done. Okay, so it has been done and it has been done and it is targeting melanoma to reduce the melanoma. So oncolytic viruses are principally divided into four types according to their mechanism of action. Okay. So they are naturally occurring selective viruses, the viruses that are not genetically modified. This is naturally occurring. This is a one, one of the type of the four. So which are not genetically modified. Okay, it directly targets on the malignant cell. For instance, Newcastle disease virus, okay, but the vesicular stomatitis virus, Polio virus and real virus are intrinsically tumor selective. However, effectivity is less due to depend on the natural strength of their lytic base. So that is one. Another one is virulent gene deleted oncolytic virus, which are popular because their selectivity on target tumors are more specific without infectivity to normal ones. For example, simplex virus, adenovirus, measles virus, and vaccina virus can be modified by deletion of their virulence in coding and then used as a virotherapy. Another one is inserting of foreign elements such as promoter region, boost tumor specificity and selectivity of oncolytic virus. Thus, the tumor cells allow the replication of this virus because only tumor cells can activate the promoter region of that. For example, prostate specific antigen, PSA promoter, inserted adenovirus TG7870 applies in the prostate cancer and promising result were came up. 
The last one is pseudotype oncolytic virus are modified with lignins. And lignin means like a um, small molecule drug which target tumor selective cell surface receptors. Therefore, they solely have their infectivity on malignant cell. Example, the adenovirus Delta 24 RGD. Moreover, this viruses may reduce toxicity and dose requirement. So when you are, so continuing on it is the immunogenicity of oncogenic, sorry, oncolytic virus. So oncolytic virus will also stimulate and activate the body defense. Okay, you don't, you don't just do it and let the body do it by itself, but it will stimulate and activate the body defense mechanism which includes innate as well as adopted immunity. I think you all have learned what is innate and adopted immunity in immunology. So it will activate that. These viruses produce viral protein required for replication within the tumor cells only. Okay, so that one would make sure that the immunogen sorry, the immunogenicity is increases. This protein also stimulates the MHC class one gene present on the cell surface of tumor cells. Okay, so previously I was telling you the E5 regulates and disrupts the MHC class one gene presentation. But this one now, while you are using this protein, it will block that activity and will allow the gene to be present on the cell surface of the tumor cell, as well as on the normal cell. MHC class one antigen was recognized by the T cells or CD8 plus cell, which may destroy any cell representing the MHC1 antigen of the, vi of the virus. Not the aerotherapy virus, but the viruses which can cause cancer. So therefore, nature immunity allows eliminating both tumor and normal non-dividing cells. Therefore, oncolytic viruses may also destroy normal cells apart from the abnormal ones. So this is the drawback small drawback is here. So an immune mechanism on the oncolytic virus is one of the major constraints for developing modern immunotherapy. And so these are the issues, but they are trying to resolve the issue of the immune mechanism, trying to find ways so that they could have more and more oncolytic viruses treat the cancer. So virotherapy, in October 2015, the TVAC was approved by FDA as the first ever oncolytic virus therapy designed specifically to target melanoma. Okay, so in Malaysia, we have very low amount of melanoma, but in certain European countries, they are quite high. So the treatment strategy utilizes a genetically engineered oncolytic virus, okay, which is the herpes simplex virus type 1 which is directly injected into the melanoma tumor sites and allow to selectively replicate using a tumor own mechanism. Okay. And then the immunosuppressed environment of the tumor, HSV1 virus successfully replicate and concentrates at the site of the tumor until the tumor bursts. So which subsequently releases tumor antigens, cytokines, and granulocytes, macrophage, colony simulating factor into the bloodstream of the lymph nodes. So when this thing happens, what will happen? The cell will start to initiate the self-defense mechanism. So the immunogenicity would increase of the cells, and these cells will be identified and be engulfed. As a result, the immune system becomes activated and produces tumor antigen specific T cell. We recognize that and destroy the melanoma tumor cells. So overall, overall, the virotherapy induces a local response by directly causing tumor cell lysis, as well as a systematic anti-tumor immune response. Thank you. So do you have any I've gone through a bit fast because it's online. So, anyone have any questions to ask here? Anyone? 
anyone? Um, so far, not yet. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah still need okay, to go. We still have. Uh, we still have thirty minutes to go on. Okay. Hold on, eh? Okay, we still have 30 minutes to go on. I will give you a break of five minutes. Okay, so go and take a break and come. I want to discuss a question with you all. Okay, question related to this topic with you all. So uh, I have a slide. I will uh, I will discuss that with you all in, uh, in, in five minutes time. I also need to go to washroom. So I'll come back and let's discuss the questions. Okay, the class didn't uh, haven't finished yet. Huh? Thank you.
比较传统一些，比较传统一些，你的翻译好，好的。
Hi, everyone is here. Yeah, total. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you all see the slides? Yep, tutorial. Yes. Hold on, man. Okay. So, um, just want to go through with you one, one main question here. So, if you look at here, viruses are the most common infective agents that can cause cancer such as cervical cancer, nasopharyngeal, liver, and others. Okay. So, as you all know, So here, if I ask you this question here, how viruses can maintain the latency for DNA and RNA viruses in cancer? So what do you all understand of latency? Tana? Like the uh, latency of the DNA or RNA, they will keep the nucleic acid or genomic material inside the DNA of the host cells. So without like, uh, producing new virus only, they will be divided and be, uh, you know, like, uh, divided by the cells, cell to cell, without pro uh, producing or developing the new virus. Okay. So and also, like, they want, they want to induce uh, the immune system to be, uh, to be recognized by the immune system. Okay. So, how about anyone else? Do you have any, anything? How what is latency means? Latency like means means prolonged condition, right? Like how they can they can stay in a very long term. Yeah. So how they can stay in very long term. So so how they can stay in so so usually what happens? Usually what happens? It, it become domain doman enter doman C, I guess. So usually when there's an infection, there's, a, there's an infection, after entering a cell, okay, hold on, man. after entering a cell, some viruses direct the cell, to make up multiple copy of the virus's own components. Am I, okay? So this is the typical way that the virus infects the cell. Once in fact, we instruct the cells to do multiple copies of the virus, and when they reach, Hundred thousand or million copies. What they do? They usually kill mm -hmm. the cell. They, yeah. the cell. they have two pathways: ly lytic and lysogenic. Is that correct? Yes. Correct, correct. So that is the common one: lytic and lysogenic. So in the lytic pathway, they will just kill the cells, rupture it, and then all this virus particle will be released out. Okay, and then they will go and infect other cells. Here. Yeah, we want to ask you, we want, we want to know about latency, how it can maintain the latency in the cell. So latency means like what uh, both of you have said, is that, that the infection is, stays there as persistent and it does not kill the cells. Okay, so how this thing is being done is by integrating into the host genome. So the viral genome integrates into the Host genome. So it is different for DNA and RNA viruses. So there is differences between how DNA viruses uh, integrate into the host and how virus RNA viruses integrate into the host. So there is different mechanism there. So let us look into the RNA viruses. Okay. Uh, hold on. Eh? Why I put. Stop sharing. Hold on here. Just give me a minute, then.
Okay. Um, so can you see? Yes. Yes. Okay. So for DNA viruses, now there was marks because previously it was a assignment question. So to explain. So if you look at DNA viruses and look into carefully, yeah, when the DNA viruses, okay, so for DNA viruses, entrance of the virus into the cell is usually followed by transcription of its DNA into messenger RNA. Okay, so because it's already reached latency, so when the virus enters the cell and it integrates into the genome, so what happened is that, okay, so the DNA of the virus will be converted to messenger RNA, mRNA. So how this thing happen? It is done by the cell because it is already uh, integrated into the host. So when there is a transcription, even the DNA, the viruses, the DNA of the viruses is being transcribed. Okay, and then if you look. And it will be translated into viral proteins that are involved in establishing and maintaining the latent state. So now the virus does not have to produce the protein because it's already integrated. So what happens is that the cell is transcribing the genome, sorry, the genes into mRNA, and the mRNA is now being translated into the viral protein. Okay, and this is where that it established and maintained the latent state because it is keep on being there. And replication, now when you look at replication, replication of cellular and viral DNA, which ensures that viral DNA may persist indefinitely as an independently replicating molecule, which means that, okay, so this is for you to look into how to get protein, but this is what what's going to happen to the cell. The cell is going to go on into cell proliferation. When the cell proliferation happens, the viral DNA, which is already integrated, okay, it makes sure that the viral DNA is now replicated into the daughter cells. Okay. And this condition is called episome. Okay. So this is how the viruses is being replicated. And then now viral DNA may become integrated into the host chromosomal DNA. Okay. Here from here, it integrate and into the host chromosomal DNA and becomes a permanent part of the cell's genetic material and is replicated by the cell as part of its own DNA. The first stage, not yet, but after episome, is integrated into the host. Did you all get it? Everyone? Yep. Okay. It's clear enough. Okay, good. So this is for the DNA viruses. So, what is the story for RNA viruses? Anyone give me an uh, idea that what is going to happen for the DNA uh, RNA viruses? Any idea what is going to happen? The previous one is here in integrate, and the last one you see no new virus particle are being produced. Or released during latent infection. There's more, no more new viral particle because it's already integrated. But for DNA, it's very simple because the DNA is there. It instructs to produce the mRNA and the viral proteins, which the viral proteins that is being uh, produced, okay, it involves, okay, it involves in the replication of the viral DNA and then. It goes to the episome stage, okay, which is controlling also. But what is going to happen to RNA? Hold on, someone put it in chat. Okay, yeah. 
RNA virus has to reverse transcribe themselves to integrate into the host genome. Correct. Exactly. Okay, so they have to reverse transcribe. So they have to reverse transcribe. The RNA viruses cannot insert gene directly into a host cell chromosome. They cannot directly insert like the DNA virus. So what they need to do? Mechanism for overcoming this is by using enzyme called reverse transcriptase, which catalyzes the synthesis of DNA using the viral RNA as a template. Okay, and then with the aid of another viral protein called integrase, the resulting DNA copy of the viral RNA is integrated into the chromosomal DNA. It's a, a bit a different mechanism. Even though it is producing it by reverse transcriptase, but it doesn't go episome, but it uses a viral protein called integrase, okay, which resulting uh, DNA would be integrated into the chromosomal DNA. Such DNA copy of gene of an RNA virus is referred as provirus. Okay, you see, a uh, such DNA copy of the genes of an RNA virus is referred to as a provirus. Okay, and then this type of RNA virus is called retroviruses. Only retroviruses type of Viruses could do this. Understand? So, do you all now get the idea how a virus could be integrated? The genome, uh, the DNA or RNA of the virus, how it could get integrated into the host cells and they became latent, they stay there and they divide, they control the cell and then the cell now tends to become more cancerous. Understand, everyone? So any, do you have any questions to ask? Because this is important for you to understand that because they don't do it just by infecting, infecting, infecting. Infecting is only to produce more virus particles. Infecting, then becoming latent is the phase where that it will convert to become cancer cells. Okay. So, any more questions that you all have? If there's no questions, thank you very much. Okay. So, what I will do, I will. Uh, uh, tutorial slides. I think tutorial slides you don't have. I also have recorded the tutorial separately. Okay, so I will put up the recording and also the slides for you all in the uh, photo after this. So you all can have it and have a look, which will be very good and uh, be helpful later for you all. Okay, so if you all have any questions or anything to ask, you all can uh, ask me, you all can WhatsApp me or Leo to ask about this. So, I think it's nearing one. All of you should be hungry. You all uh, in very long since morning. Uh, so, thank you all for coming in and getting the idea of what is how a cancer could be caused by viruses. So, hi. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you.